Normally I'll print out just like one or maybe two models from my sponsor to show you guys what they look like alongside the build. But this time around, I decided to print a bunch of them. One Page Rules has this really cool set of soldiers called the Duchies of Vinci. And I really like them. They're this sort of Renaissance inspired set of soldiers and knights, but with a bit of a mechanical twist, which I'm assuming is inspired based on the name by Da Vinci's sketches of war machines. And since they could be done with a pretty fast bulk paint job, I just printed and painted a nice little unit of models. But what was I actually gonna build to go with them? I wasn't sure at first, you know, like what kind of game or terrain piece. So I myself turned to Da Vinci and his sketches of battle machines for inspiration. Some of them are pretty neat, but also not really practical to build or use in a game. Ballistas, however, are incredibly common in the wargaming and fantasy RPG world, so I opted to go with a big bad ballista. This also really suited the theme of the particular models that I chose, which all happened to have hand crossbows. This is a pretty classic build for D&D terrain, and many of my friends and peers have made them in the past. I actually think that maybe one of the first hobby videos I ever saw on YouTube was a ballista one from DM Scotty. But these types of terrain pieces are something that I've always kind of shied away from on the channel. There's two ways to approach building something like this. You can just do it really simply using found bits that has this sort of like general shape that implies what the item is, but isn't very detailed, you know, use buttons and whatnot. And this approach often results in a build that can be kind of all over the place in terms of proportions and aesthetic and scale. And often the parts you use like the buttons or bottle caps or whatever other found objects you might use can be really obvious and immersion breaking. Now this is the best approach to take if you just need to quickly make a whole bunch of them for a session, they serve their purpose just fine. But if you want something that looks more realistic, more like a scale model in style, you gotta get into very tedious scratch building uh, and really take your time. Now personally, I like to find a happy balance between these two types of approaches in my terrain builds. So I never really make stuff like this as finding that middle ground doesn't really work on this kind of item. But this week I did feel like doing something tedious and detailed and challenge myself to make it look really good without relying on purchasing any model kit pieces or printing anything out. My main goals on this piece were to get the proportions right and not have the parts look like the materials that I used to make it. Now, I didn't try to replicate one specific source image as it seems like there's 101 ways to build a ballista Instead, I tried to capture an overall feel and look while cherry picking specific details and design styles that best suited the materials I had on hand. Using knives and rotary tool to carve up these little pieces was deeply satisfying. I didn't put in a ridiculous amount of effort making sure that all the bits and parts would be entirely mechanically accurate, but I did want all the parts to have a purpose and to at least imply correct mechanics. That meant I needed a piece that would hold the bolt and the string, the, you know, the part that would be cranked back to create the tension that would send this bolt firing through the air. There's definitely a name for this, uh, along with all the parts of a ballista, I'm sure, and I'm sure many of you will be telling me those names in the comments. Just keep in mind that I know I could quickly look these up. It's just that I don't really care that much about the names of ballista parts and I just wanted to build the damn thing. Another thing that was a real hero on this one and many builds in the past are these little metal eyelet pins that I bought at Michael's years ago. I highly suggest that you go through the jewelry making section of your craft store and look at all the little hardware. It's absolutely full of packs of interesting little things that are perfect for scale modeling. Another great thing that can be found in that section is really fine gauge metal wire. This stuff is amazing for scale rope. Because it's metal, it makes it a lot easier to actually do what you want it to do on a piece as it stays more rigid and straight than just string or thread. It also has a bit of a texture to it if it's braided or twisted that really helps sell the look of a tiny rope. I was super pleased just how well this portion of the build worked out and how surprisingly smoothly it was all going. The main body of the ballista was looking pretty damn good, so I moved onto the undercarriage and made a simple frame. But this frame would need some wheels. Now, scratch building wheels can be very difficult. Uh, if I were to 3D print something for a project like this, it would definitely be some spoked wagon wheels. 
but I really wanted to challenge myself by making this whole thing just out of stuff that I had on hand. And this took a few tries. I had some MDF circles that made life a lot easier and gave me a starting point, but I went through a couple of them before I got the size right and the positioning of the hole correctly centered for the axle. And the MDF pieces on their own would kind of just like make this thing look like one of those hobby puzzle things that you can buy. And I really didn't want that. I wasn't up for making spoked wheels by hand, so I needed to adorn these flat, solid wheels with something to make them look different. That very morning, I had saved this thin piece of metal, the thing that seals a can of coffee. I thought it had a really great texture to it, and I figured I could just attach that to these wheels to kind of clad them in this steel protective plating, perfect for an instrument of war. And you know what, this did look pretty good, but then I noticed my collection of Metal Gears, another jewelry aisle treasure. Now, if I were just making this as a general war machine, I think I would have just stuck with that metal plating. But because the models I was inspired by were so mechanical, you know, the cavalry horses in particular being covered in gears and pistons, I thought thematically these gears would be perfect. You know, they're the perfect size for this and it would kind of unify the build with the models. Now, if I were to do this again, I'd probably just stack a couple of these gears together to get a good thickness and just use them alone as the wheels as they'd look really great. And while I fudge around with tiny details on this thing, let's take a second to look at the sponsor whose models inspired this really fun day of building. One Page Rules are the creators of a simple, easy to play and free tabletop war game, but they also make 3D printable models that can be used in whatever games you want. With a $10 Patreon pledge, you get access to a ton of models in two different distinct themes to create your own army, warband, or horde of villains. This month's theme are the Duchies of Vinci, which is full of great looking armored soldiers, assassins, and cavalry, and the Alien Hive, which makes for nasty looking proxies for your favorite alien creatures. You can use these models for their own game or as proxies in casual games of Warhammer or Kill Team or Necromunda. They're great for things like Frostgrave and D&D too. I mean, you can literally print out an entire unit in a few hours, batch paint them and be playing the same day. This is a great and cost-effective way to get a few armies together for some fun at-home casual wargaming with friends and family that won't cost you thousands of dollars in models. Seriously, this is by far the most cost-effective way to get yourself playing some war games. And if you're just an RPG player, well, it's a great way to build a big fleet of city guard or scary villains. I'll put a link in the video description so you can go check them out for yourself. The rest of this build really came down to small little elements to help sell what this thing is and how it works. Again, it's not a perfectly accurate historical representation of any particular real life ballista, uh, but I still wanted it to kind of feel right, so to speak. You know, I added gears and handles and various tiny bits in places that seemed appropriate. It needed back wheels to make it movable on the battlefield. It needed something to steer it with and some mechanism to imply that the whole thing could be raised or lowered at different angles. And I really made use of those small craft store gears for this. I don't like to use these very often because putting them on stuff has a tendency to just look like random gear slapped on things and calling it steampunk. There really wasn't much painting to be done on this. Just a prime, a zenithal highlight with white, and then a coat of raw umber ink. Some people still get really confused why modelers often build something out of wood, then prime it all black, and then just paint it again to look like wood. Why would you do that? Why not just stain the wood, you ask? I, I can hear you thinking that. I can hear you typing it. Uh, the thing is that this doesn't generally work that well in practice. It, it seems good on paper, but trust me, the various different woods you use take stain differently. Some things like bamboo skewers or toothpicks don't take stain at all. Plus you have all the glue that's dripped out all over the joints and those areas won't take the stain. So you end up with wood that is stained right next to these weird splotchy shiny areas that are unfinished and it looks like a mess. To me, it just looks awful and I'd rather just paint it out. Plus next to other items that are painted, it generally makes the pieces more cohesive uh, in fitting together. And this paint job was really simple overall. It only took like half an hour to do, maybe at most, probably less. Most of that was spent picking out the little metallic objects with a brush and adding some extra washes to those areas. And I don't think it looks like a crappy rush paint Paint job, I think it looks pretty great. I'm happy with how the wood grain on the popsicle sticks in particular turned out. I'm happy with the overall proportions of the build. 
I'm happy that it at least looks somewhat mechanically believable. I accomplished my goal and it's exactly what I set out to do. And it feels really nice in the hands. It's a solid, durable piece with a bit of weight to it. It's a nice tactile gaming piece. I think I need to let myself spend more time just carving things with a rotary tool in the future as it's really fun. But that's the problem with this hobby, isn't it? Like there's a lot of things that are enjoyable that you can do, but you can only do one of those things at a time and there's only so much time in the day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna grab some hobby supplies and support the channel in the process, consider doing your online shopping through the links in my essential equipment page. That's a great way that's free for you to support the production of videos like this. And if you wanna help out by throwing a few of your hard earned dollary dues my way, the best way you can do that is on Patreon. It's thanks to the support there that I'm able to keep making these videos and keep this channel going. And I'd love to see you there. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers. See you again soon.